and then the West being stuck with it. What we do is that we work the, the, the system around the annual budget. And we have broken the budget, the annual budget, into four phases. There are the phases, not phase one, is where the budget document is prepared by the ministries until it goes to the Ministry of Finance where they put it together, until it goes to cabinet where cabinet approves it, and the president then sends it to parliament. So all the processes leading to the submission of the budget to parliament and the reading of the budget by the Minister of Finance on behalf of the president, we will call it phase one. The phase two is when the document goes to parliament for the people's representatives to debate and accept and agree that yes, we think this budget is good for Ghana. And look at it how interesting it is. The budget is prepared by the government, but they don't have the power to approve it. They must send it to another arm of government to approve it. A beautiful check and um, uh, system of checks and balances. But remember, there could be problems there. In the first phase, which I talked about, the system demands that we should have a national development plan. And the national budget, annual budget, is drawn from the national development plan. That is why our constitution put in place the NDPs. We are supposed to consult all of us and we agree that these are the developmental projects that we want to undertake as a country. The government is then supposed to prepare its budget drawing from that plan. Although this is the law, subsequent governments in Ghana have never done it. Not under President Rawlings, not under President Kufour, not under the present government. The result is that we have continued to prepare budgets based more on our political manifestos than on a national development plan. That, that, that is dangerous because political manifestos are simply to win votes. They are not to grow the economy. That is why we promise to build a bridge even where there is no uh, river. We talk big, big in political manifestos, but it's not the way to uh, what to do to grow the economy. So that is one danger there in phase one. In phase two, the budget comes to parliament. And how about it? Government has prepared parliament. Another arm of government, go and approve. Beautiful. But it depends upon the parliamentarians willing to put up their political hats and behave like Ghanaians. But from 1993, have you heard a member of the opposition praising the government's budget? Have you heard of a member, a parliamentarian from the government party opposing the government budget? So that beautiful check and balance is lost. Most times, when the government budget is, when the budget is being read, as a good parliamentarian, I spend about four weeks looking for the right ways that I will use to get the media to capture me. So the point I just want to make is that that beautiful check and balance of parliamentarians checking the budget is lost because we do too much politics. But why shouldn't we do too much politics? The constitution says the president should get the majority of his uh, ministers from parliament. So if I'm from the government side, why should I go and open my mouth and be denied the opportunity to become a minister? Because in Ghana, we think if you're in parliament, your party is in power and you are not a minister, then you are no good. You know in Ghana, we vote by voice. In America, you raise your hand, or we know how you voted in the advanced country. So here, I can vote to kill my mother without anybody knowing. All those in favor of killing Kandapa's mother, say yeah, say yeah. <laughs> in the advanced countries, there's a record of how you voted. 